For Australian farmers battling one of the worst droughts of all time, water is more precious than gold. So how would they and the rest of us who depend on them for food react knowing government authorities, whose job it is to manage our water, are wasting millions and millions of litres of it, deliberately? On the Upper Murray River, water that could save farmers is spilling over the banks. Enough to fill two Sydney harbours was lost last year alone. It's a national scandal unfolding in secret. But while farmers are being sold down the river by the bureaucrats, not everyone's losing. Corporate speculators trading in water are swimming in profits. In August last year, the gates opened on dams along the upper Murray River. They wouldn't close for 141 days. It let loose a man-made flood. 16,000 megs a day spilling through the Yarrawonga Weir. In this, one of the greatest droughts we've ever seen. It's scarcely believable, but while much of Australia was gripped by one of our worst droughts in history, the people who manage our most precious resource were wasting it in truly epic proportions. Millions of litres of water flooding a protected national forest while a dairy industry dies in the heat. We're in a man-made drought. Our water is flowing past us every single day and we can't touch it. All caused by speculators and bureaucrats cutting deals to sell water to the highest bidder and damn the consequences. Water flows to money to ordinary Australians. It's a tragedy, it's horrifying. The paddocks may still have the barest hint of green, but make no mistake, this dairy farm in New South Wales Upper Murray, owned by Neil Campbell and his daughter Meg, is dry as dust. Come on. Most of their cows have already been shipped to China. Thank you, girls. The few remaining have to be fed by hand. Soon, they'll be sold off too. After three generations, the Campbell's farm is finished. When you look around and, and you're faced with that heartbreaking reality and people already have sold up and yeah. have left, yeah. have you accepted that reality for yourself yet? Not really, no. no. I, some days I think I have and then I walk out to the cows and I think, no, I can't, like, we can't, this can't be happening. And it's all for lack of water. But just over the horizon is the Murray River. It's two and a half thousand kilometres flowing across New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. Despite the terrible drought, its dams are over 50% full. And guess what? The river is even flooding over its banks and being wasted. But the bureaucrats back in Sydney and Canberra who manage the Murray still claim there's not enough water to go around which means the Campbells get none, even though they pay $150,000 a year. They haven't allocated the water to help the other farmers that are in desperate need of fodder. That's, I find that a sin. That is just stupidity. You know, there is no future for this area if there's no water, and that's devastating. Dragonfly. Two dragonflies coming through. And incredibly, Neil and Meg's neighbour, Ray Smith, can't touch a drop of the water running right through his dairy farm either. Because it's being pushed down river to be sold off to the highest bidder. Can you make any sense of why you haven't got any water? No, not when the river's running so full. <laughs> I'd like a bit of transparency into where all the water's going. It wouldn't worry me too much if it wasn't man-made, but this is man-made. This is policy driven. Someone's making these stupid rules up. Um, like we realise it's a drought, but we're not going to crook about the drought. We're going to crook about the, the waste of water. The most precious resource we have in this country, and we're wasting it. To try to understand why the Murray River might be deliberately flooded and all that water wasted, you need to step into the shadowy world of water trading. 
buying and selling water desperately needed by our farmers for profit. We can sell it for... Various state agencies like Water New South Wales and its counterparts interstate approve these secretive water sales. Profiting most from Australia's precious water are large multinational businesses. Because of the drought, the price of water is sky high. So it's only the biggest players who can afford to buy it, like almond plantations, many foreign owned, way down river. And so the sales are executed. Then the Murray-Darling Basin Authority, or MDBA, releases the water that's been sold from dams in New South Wales and Victoria. Sending it on a journey across hundreds of kilometres. But on its way, these massive water sails have to flow through this, the Barma Choke, the narrowest point of the Murray River. The choke just can't hold the water being sent through it by the MDBA. So it floods, causing enormous losses. So this water shouldn't be here? No, it shouldn't be. It should be running out on someone's farm. It's one of the country's worst droughts, but I'm walking through a lake of wasted water with local wheat farmer Chris Brooks. Toxic and stagnant, spreading for kilometres in every direction. They fill this Murray River that full that it spills. Anyone knows you can only fit 10 litres into a 10 litre bucket. And these idiots are trying to put 20 litres into a 10 litre bucket. And because it spills and runs off into the forest, it's just cascading over the bank of the Murray River because there's too much in it. Last year for 141 days. That's 800,000 megalitres wasted in one forest. 800,000 megalitres is nearly two Sydney harbours worth of water wasted. That's 100% of our usage in this region. It is mismanagement on a grand scale that is creating this hardship. Very few people understand the terrible impact these water deals can have on the Murray River and how they waste water that could irrigate the farms of the Upper Murray. But Marianne Slattery of the Australia Institute was once a senior officer at the Murray-Darling Basin Authority. So from your calculations, that water wastage could have actually saved the farmers who are now struggling? Yes, that's right. If the losses weren't so high, there's water available for everyone else, yep. And when you made these discoveries, when you started putting all these numbers together, looking at the MDBA's own data, how did you feel about what was happening, what you'd uncovered? I'm really angry and um, uh, governments just should not do this to people. mary -Ann's breakthrough research specifically covered an enormous water loss by the MDBA between August last year and January this year. Those nearly two Sydney Harbours worth are buried in the MDBA's official report, hidden by bureaucratic jargon like transmission losses and overbank transfers. That's code for water wastage. Nationals MP David Littleproud is the Federal Water Minister. When we look at the MDBA's own figures that detail almost two Sydney Harbours worth of water being lost, would you expect that to be accepted by most Australians? Well, obviously, on face, face value, it sounds quite damning, but you've got to understand this is an environment that's changing and it's not easy to make those decisions. Uh, they're striving to do better and we expect them to do better. I mean, the MDBA brushes aside those losses using jargon. When they're talking about transmission losses, overbank transfers, what does that mean? Uh, totally. And I, I think uh, that's one of the aspects that the states and the Basin Authority can all work on is better communication. And how we do that is, is, a, is an area of improvement for everybody. Coming up... It is spillage, it's deplorable, and it's doing damage. So much water wasted. It's a tragedy. It's horrifying. You can see it from space. So when you look at this, clearly something's gone wrong. Look, I, I'm happy to look at the detail of that and... and explore it. But still not a drop for the farmers in need. If only some moron in the government would turn the tap back on. That's next on 60 Minutes. Interesting here that the 
the primary channel coming down through the choke. 60 Minutes commissioned cutting-edge satellite imagery analysis to investigate man-made flooding and massive water wastage on the Murray River by the government authority meant to manage it. And so we've analysed it beyond the naked eye here? Correct. We were commissioned to do additional analysis on the area itself. Um, if we flick to the analysis itself, visually you can now see the extent of the water in the region. Uh, much more clearly, and there's also... What Simon Gregg and the team from GeoImage discovered was astounding, focusing on the Murray's narrowest point, the Barmer Choke. So what we're seeing now is something really we've never seen before, the extent of the water through the Barmer Choke. Correct. I would not expect this analysis to have been done over the area before. GeoImage's analysis even penetrates beneath the trees, revealing the colossal scale of the water wasted by the Murray-Darling Basin Authority, or MDBA, between August last year and this January. Damning evidence we raised during our interview with Federal Water Minister David Littleproud. His response was immediate. Look, I'm happy to look at the detail of that and explore it and actually provide a detailed response. Uh, obviously, something as detailed as that, and you've taken a lot of work and effort to do it, uh, out of respect, I'd be more than happy to have a look at it and ask questions of the MDBA as well. I guess when we think about, you know, two, almost two Sydney Harbour's worth of water sitting idle there, surely you yourself must feel some kind of outrage here at a time when farmers are suffering through one of the worst droughts we've seen. Well, if that's, if that's the quantity that, that is proven, um, yes, definitely. Obviously, I want to get underneath the bonnet of this and I'm happy to make sure that the MDBA also looks at it and is accountable to it as well. As if last year's colossal water wastage wasn't bad enough, 60 Minutes has evidence it's happening again. The Murray River is in flood right now as the Murray-Darling Basin Authority fulfills deals cut on the water market. This is where they're trying to fit 18,000 megs a day down, and as you can see, it's, it's no more than 20 metres wide. The MDBA is not only charged with managing the river to ensure the water is shared between farmers like Chris Brooks, it has a legal obligation to protect the internationally recognised forest at the Barmer Choke. It is a waste, it is spillage, it's deplorable, and it's doing damage. The MDBA claims much of the wasted water here is for environmental reasons. But senior ecologists contacted by 60 Minutes say this is actually the epicentre of the river's mismanagement, an unfolding environmental catastrophe. Well, you've got a hell of a lot of devastation, you know. The red gums are dying in their hundreds, their roots eroded by the man-made flooding. And beyond the banks, killed by the relentless inundation of water made toxic by the trees shedding leaves. Is there a fine line between protecting it and destroying it? I oh, know they've made a pretty special effort to destroy it. There's nothing fine line about it. It's taken years and you know massive volumes of water and some horrendously stupid decisions and poor policies for a long time. It's an environmental catastrophe happening to an internationally protected site. I mean, we were there only last week and it looks like a wasteland. Well, obviously, um, any degradation of environment is concerning uh, to any Australian and obviously we don't want that to happen. Well, they're breaking their own rules, though, to get the water downstream. I mean, who's accountable? Is there an accountability? Uh, there's always accountability by the MDBA. They're accountable to the parliament. They have to report every year and it's not, it's not intentional, but we're dealing with the environment here and sometimes that makes it a challenging so this is where all the water's going? This is where the water from the Upper Murray is coming to. Bill Johnson is a river ecologist and former director in the MDBA. What do you think when you look out here? Well, I think there's a lot of almond trees. They're going to need a lot of water. What we're looking at is the water market in operation and why the MDBA is pushing way too much of it down the Murray. They really are growing on an enormous scale here. These massive, new almond plantations near the South Australian border require permanent irrigation. And the many foreign corporations who own them have the money to pay for their water. You know, water flows to money. They need a lot of water every day, they need a lot of water every year. And they've just got to push it down as fast as they can. But does that justify wasting all that water? Well, the market doesn't consider that it's wasted. People talk about the market as though it has some sort of conscience or, or, or moral compass. It simply, it, it simply doesn't. 
How do you justify that to the public, to the farmers who get no water? Well, I can't justify it. I think it's unjustifiable. It's a tragedy. It's horrifying. And part of the tragedy is that the system has been allowed to be run by the power of the market and those people, their lives, their livelihoods, their histories hold no weight. So many lives and livelihoods and histories are being sold down the river by the water market and those who administer it. Dairy farmer Ray Smith is just hanging on. But for his mate, Neil Campbell, it's over. I get on the motorbike and I take a stubby with me and one for on, later on, and I just cruise around the farm and I have a look and I go, shit, I've worked hard here. Probably worked 80 hours a week all my life. And you just go, she's all gone, son. And that's the way it is. Farmers say Minister Littleproud has taken too long to notice. But now even he admits the water market has gone too far. It might be legal. I mean, it's not illegal, yeah. certainly. But totally. it's, it's not unlawful, but is it acceptable? Well, I think we need to have a philosophical conversation as a nation in a mature way about should water be treated as a, as a, a commodity like coal or gold. Um, I think it's, my personal belief is it isn't. It's a different commodity. It's a source of all life. And the evolution of this market may have taken us to a point uh, that isn't in the national interest. I'm not waving. I'm You'd have to ask, where is the national interest in farms like Chris Brooks's in the Upper Murray dying for lack of water? While just a short distance away, the water that would save it is lying wasted, ruining an iconic national forest. But there's still plenty left in the dams, it seems, for those who can pay. The system's broken. The water management system in the Murray Basin, in large parts, is broken. I don't think there's a farmer born that hasn't stood there and yelled at the clouds or the wind or something, but, you know, you can't actually square up with Mother Nature. But this sort of madness being inflicted on these people by their government, you know, it's ruining the environment, it's, it's ruining the economy and it's ruining people's health. It is just unreasonable and unacceptable for so many people to be so badly affected if only some moron in the government would turn the tap back on. Minister Littleproud is so concerned with how the Murray-Darling Basin is being managed, he's appointing a former Australian Federal Police Commissioner to investigate. And to get the job done properly, Mick Kelty will be given powers similar to a Royal Commissioner. We asked the MDBA to answer critical questions about the massive water losses we discovered. Their statement can be found on our website. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.